How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Eastern with Jim Valley on Saturdays and Sundays with me. We're here. A week away from WrestleMania. Things are starting to heat up big time into WWE. Actually, while we're doing the show, I'm re-watching SmackDown. I just have it on. Uh, but a lot is going on right now. Uh, Cody's, I guess, uh, road to the title. Cody Rhodes to the title. A lot of stuff on that side. Bray Wyatt, what's going on with him? CM Punk with his cryptic Instagram stories. We're going to talk about this in our news segment here. Trash Tony Khan, John Moxley, Chris Jericho, and our very own Dave Meltzer. Uh, listen, trash everybody. Leave Dave alone, please. He doesn't know, man. Dave's arms are way bigger than CM Punk's. He'll crush him like a coconut. He'll put him in his bicep. It'll be unbelievable. But a lot of stuff going on on that side. You know, uh, there's still, I mean, after everything that's going on, there's still a lot of speculation that he he, he is maybe coming back. He's not coming back. What does Tony do? We're going to talk about that, obviously. Uh, Fightful uh, also reported that they're possibly considering a change in the location for all out this year to go to the United Center. We'll talk about that. We were there a couple of years ago. That building's great, but it's a little too small. Vince McMahon paying back his hush money, $17.4 million. We'll talk about that. And we're going to run down the current WrestleMania card, everything leading up to WrestleMania, Raw, SmackDown, AEW, everything else that's happening in the world of professional wrestling, which is a ton. And joining me today, it's a Matt Men takeover. Rich Stambolian of the Matt Men Podcast, my co-host. My eternal co-host in professional wrestling joining me here on Wrestling Observer Live. We'll be right back after this here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. I want to remind everybody about the convention that's coming up in Las Vegas. The F4W Convention 2023 Memorial Day weekend during Double or Nothing. The AW pay-per-view, obviously, that's happening in Vegas. I was there last year. It was fantastic. I had a blast. Meet and greets, Q&A, sweet party, dinner, and a whole lot more. Listen, guys, if you're going to Double or Nothing, if you're in Las Vegas, even if you're not going to Double or Nothing, and you're in Vegas that weekend, and you're a pro wrestling fan, you're an Observer fan, you're an F4W fan, I highly recommend you check this out. F4Wonline.com slash Vegas. That's F4Wonline.com slash Vegas. Go there, sign up, join in on the fun. It's going to be a blast that weekend hey i'm gonna bring in my co-host here my co-host on almost everything i do the guy that brought me into professional wrestling podcasting if it wasn't for him i wouldn't be doing this to be honest rich stambolian of the matt men podcast what's going on rich what's up man thanks for having me as always i appreciate uh you wanting me to come on uh, you can't get rid of me i cannot get rid of you i cannot get rid of you but I thought, you know what? Let's do it. Let's do a Matt Men takeover again here because people have very much enjoyed the show last time. It's a little bit different. I think we're a little bit looser on Matt Men, but this is fun too. This is a whole different format. You know, you got to keep it fresh. Uh, a lot of craziness going on in the world of professional wrestling. I want to start off by the CM Punk story this week. CM Punk sent out a cryptic Instagram story, essentially trashing everybody from Tony Khan, John Moxley, Chris Jericho, and Dave, as I said at the top of the hour. He also posted another Friday night uh, uh, story of an alleged interaction with Shawn Michaels. Now, I, I want to explain to people, a lot of people are losing their minds. I got this sent to me like a billion times when he posted this on Friday. He didn't make up that story. It was a, it's a meme from like the 2000s. I used to see this on like the early days of Reddit. Uh... I've seen this story posted numerous times. He didn't come up with this. This is like a like a weird internet joke of of like people doing like shoot interviews and then it, it kind of manifests into this. Or it was a fan. Actually, no, it was a fan story about the first time they met Shawn Michaels at dinner. So a lot of people lost their minds on it. But I think the big story here, Rich, is that original quote that he put out. Do you want to read that? Yeah, absolutely. I think this is kind of interesting because I feel like it, it in a weird way, it broke the Internet and it, there's a lot of stuff you can pull from this. But I'm going to read the quote directly as he posted it to IG and then Instagram and then deleted it. Sigh. I wasn't clear to come back to wrestle yet. 
The plan was to wrestle at the pay-per-view. I sat and listened to Moxley's Rocky Three idea. I explained how I'd never seen a Rocky movie. And I thought the idea sucked. But if the boss wanted to do it, whatever. He said he wouldn't lose to me. I never experienced someone refusing to lose to me. I just laughed. I asked Tony if this is what he wanted. He said, yes, he's the boss. So I said, okay, but I need to be cleared first. They kept saying it could just be a squash, so I didn't need to be cleared. I scoffed at that. My health is more important. Dave Meltzer's a liar. Chris Jericho's a liar and a stooge. There were plans, but plans always change. But I'll never put a company above my health ever again. Very interesting here. Yep. Very interesting. Um, he did not mention the Bucks. He did not mention Kenny. He didn't mention mm-hmm. anything of the altercation. Uh, this is interesting because I I understand like he's never seen Rocky three, but the fact that Moxie would say I'll never lose to you or I wouldn't lose to you, uh, it's like I don't know, you know. Believe what you want to believe. I don't think yeah. Dave is making up a story here. I don't think Dave is in the business of putting out fake stories. Uh, you know, this is whatever he's been told. And I'm sure he's being told a, a side of the story that Punk is not agreeing with. But, you know, the original thing was when he came out, everybody was saying that he was listening Dave's story or or the version that's out there was the Bucks version, which was it was never the case. Um, you know, what happened that night is very tragic, but... I mean, this is like, why are you kind of alluding at, like, it, it sounds so pro wrestling, all of this. He wanted to do a Rocky really Three does. finish. I've never seen Rocky Three, so I said, I won't do it, but whatever, if the boss wants it. And then he said, um, you'll never beat me. I'm like, oh, a little Shawn Michaels Bret Hart here, huh? It's fascinating, and there's a lot to unpack in these three little paragraphs. And mainly, you know, like I personally, and I think you're the same way, you never take this stuff to heart. It's pro wrestling, you know, because when you take it to heart, you start getting worked, and you get worked up by all the, all these weird things, right? My takeaway as a big old nerd is, yeah, how could this dude have never seen a Rocky movie? You, <laughs> the ultimate, the ultimate underdog story. Like, if, honestly, if if this read a different way and it was i sat and listened to moxley's rudy idea and i explained to him <laughs> i never saw the movie rudy i would totally be like yeah you know what that's an underdog story absolutely like he never saw rudy so right. what can you but explain Ro- to me yeah, it's rocky okay explain to people yeah. what what that rocky 3 idea is what was the Rocky three idea? He I'm was very, the I'm underdog, right? He got vague. he got his yeah. butt kicked. He got his butt kicked immediately, and then it was his comeback story, right? He was Rocky's always the underdog in every single movie, you know. So the first one it was going the distance with Apollo. The it was Clubber Lang. Is, it was Clubber Lang. Right. Rocky third III. one, yeah, yeah. Third one is Clubber Lang, uh, and then the fourth one is Ivan Drago. Third so one him, is third one is uh, I know we're going down a rocky rabbit hole. I haven't seen Rocky Thunder in Lips. years. Yeah. Thunder Lips and Clubber Lang are yes. Rocky Three. Yes. Hogan. Is he alluding to Hogan? Am I nitpicking this too much? <laughs> Does he not want to do a pro a work match with Hogan? Is that what it is? Listen, man, I and then also on Dynamite, if you saw when they were doing that opening segment, they had blocked out CM Punk's face from the truck. The wrap, the vinyl right. wrap. They had put a bunch of stuff over it. Listen, you know, if I, I say this every time. If they could make this happen, if they could make this work in some capacity, everybody sits down and just gets over this ridiculous fight. This could be a humongous yeah. business opportunity for everybody that was involved in this, including Hangman and Moxley and, uh, you know, everybody else, Jericho, they, they yeah. this could turn into something humongous that would lead them into a one year or more of programs and opportunities to capture a captivating audience. I'm not saying that that's what I want. I'm not saying that that's what's going to happen. But in any business, uh, listen, I, I my background is my background. I, I've explained it a thousand times. If I can make this work, oh, yeah, hell yeah, I'm going to try to make it work. You got Absolutely. the biggest story outside of. You know, there were three huge stories that year. Cody leaving, Vince's mm. uh, Vince's uh, allegations, and him stepping down mm. from the company. 
and, and CM Punk, uh, CM Punk, uh, and the fight at 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 All Out. The scrum, yeah. The scrum. So there really, there really are not any bigger stories here. You're obviously not getting Cody back. Vince is obviously back in WWE, which you, that may work in your benefit in some capacity if you're AEW. However, this, you know, what you do with CM Punk, I, I don't know if he would go back to WWE. I, I don't know if that's a possibility. Likely not, but who knows? Where, what is he going to do? He's going to go to Japan? Maybe he could do that. There's nowhere else for him to go. He definitely has that pro wrestling itch back. You know, he didn't leave it on his own like terms. That. He left on a very, uh, very chaotic term. You know, when he left originally from WWE, he left on his own terms. He said, hell with this. I'm out of here. I don't think he would have posted something like this if he didn't have that itch. Right. And also the Rocky three thing could be where Thunderlips throws Rocky into the crowd and starts doing like taunting. Maybe that's what Moxley wanted to you know, do. You know, you know, last time that's Moxley, like a very visually. Yeah. Last time CM Punk went into the crowd, guess what happened? He, he, he broke his foot or ankle, whatever it was. So maybe he didn't want to do Not, that. That's true. You know, but again, you know, like everything that's said and done, everybody has their different side to a story and everybody also has to remember this is pro wrestling. So at the end of the day, like you said, if, if money is to be made, this could be a they could print money with this, with the Moxley stuff, with the Buck stuff, with the Kenny stuff. You know? Absolutely. They have that in the chamber. And if they pull the trigger, this is how they start competing again. You know, CM yeah. Punk and Cody not being there. Honestly, I do think it kind of hurt them in a certain regard. Right. Absolutely. No, 100 percent of hurts them. Uh, you know, it hurt them with the PR aspect, the optics aspect with with an owner mm -hmm. a founder going. And it hurt them with their number one guy, their most drawable guy, leaving the company. We're going to go to a quick break. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here with me, Andrew Zarian. I'm joined by my co-host, Rich Stambolian of the Mat Men Podcast. BTC Rich on Twitter, but it has nothing to do with Bitcoin. How many offers have you gotten for that username? I have not gotten any offers for the username, but my DMs are flooded with Bitcoin people on the regular. It'll be like <laughs> somebody I know, somebody I know, and then five, no, no joke, five at least a day where it's like, hey, I'd buy. are you temperamental on this? Are you bullish on that? And I am i don't respond to any of them, but it's you go to my page. It is not a Bitcoin. I've been I've been telling people. I swear to you, whenever anybody asks me, like, oh, is he into Bitcoin? Is that why it's BTC? I'm like, yeah, and he made millions off of Dogecoin. So you're a Dogecoin millionaire, according to a lot of people. You're just saying that so you can boost your Doge investments. <laughs> <laughs> per Fightful, AEW is considering moving the all-out location to, the, to possibly United Center. This may be a good move for them. You know, uh, that building's nice in Huffman Estates. It's a nice, quiet area. It's very industrial and residential on one side. Uh, the yeah. best brunch I've ever had, by the way. That brunch. that brunch that we had over there in that little shopping center where like JR was and like all, all the AEW guys came. I forgot mm -hmm. the name of it, but it was by far. Was it strawberries? I think it was strawberries. Was it strawberries or was it butterflies? It was something maybe like butterflies, that. Maybe butterflies, but something like that. Butterflies or strawberries. My God, unbelievable brunch over there. Uh, but they're looking to move it to the United Center, bigger capacity. You know, this is their their big show of the year. Uh, I think that's cool. I think that's easier for a lot of people to travel to. Um, yep. Hotel options are a lot more. Eating options are a lot more. The other problem with that building is if you haven't gone there, you can't depend on on rideshare services. There, There is no... no. It is a nightmare. It's a disaster. We were stranded. Everybody was stranded. It took hours to get back to the hotel, unless you were staying at the Marriott that was, like, down the block. But it is out in the middle of nowhere. So um, I'm glad that they're moving it or considering moving it. The United Center is a great building, and it's just another yeah. uh, another thing for them to do. They can move another special show there. Add another pay-per-view and put it there. You know, they have room. They have oh, four yeah, shows absolutely. a year only. Uh, also, they have um, um, double, uh, Forbidden Door coming up. Apparently, a pre-tape segment for Raw on Monday was reshot after the performers said the world word wrestling. This is leading to speculation of Vince is more hands-on. 
I mean, how could he not be hands on? Right? Right. You think Vince is way more hands on than people think? Absolutely. Come on. I think like through by hook or by crook is uh, another wrestling term for you. I think this dude is shooting off text messages, you know, kind of keeping his eye on stuff. I don't think he's in gorilla per se, but the presence is definitely probably still felt there. You yeah. you are under the umbrella of Vince McMahon, correct? Yeah. yeah. According to the SEC filing, Vince McMahon reimburses WWE $17.4 million in the hush money investigation. We knew that this was coming. Also, Fightful Select reported on Monday that Goldberg's contract with WWE expired at the end of 2022. He's now a free agent. Now, this leads me into, you know, does Bill Goldberg want to wrestle anywhere else outside of WWE? Forbidden door. I mean, it... it what would you he just spears tanahashi can you imagine oh my god who's you know? next yeah who's listen next? who who would you if if that insane 2023 forbidden door happens right let's say goldberg somehow does something with a new japan aew crossover who would you make his opponent uh on the on the new japan side it has to be someone. It, you okay. know what? It would have to be ridiculous. It would be Will Ospreay. I want to see Will Ospreay and Goldberg in a match. Um, you know, but the, you know that leads me to a good question here. Let's say Tony's able yeah. to make this work because I, I believe there was a report that Tony has had conversations about maybe, possibly. You know, the door is open there. What right. would be the best thing for him to do if he were to go to AEW in some capacity that wouldn't upset the whole you, you know wrestling world? Do you bring him in as a heel? Do you bring him in cutting a promo saying like, yeah, Tony Khan paid me $3 million to be here. But you know what? When I took a, took a look at that locker room, I don't think anybody could stand up to Bill Goldberg. Boo, boo, boo him out of the building. No, he, he And would then come somebody in as a steps baby. up and challenges him. You know, what if what if he just saves Sting from something? You know, he comes in, saves Sting, and then, you you know, you do some crazy hot shot angle on Dynamite the following week. Bill Goldberg versus Jeff Jarrett for the first time in 20 something years on on TV on TNT or TBS whatever or however you want to build this. You know it would be wild if let's say he does let's go down that route. He yeah. Goldberg shows up, he saves Sting from something, right? And somehow they end up in some kind of triple threat tag team match. Goldberg and Sting versus the Hardy Boys versus the Young Bucks. Oh my god, that that you know what? Then then it would just all melt. You know when like you're watching it... you're watching like a movie and then like the reel kind of stops and it's just flicking and mm -hmm. it's just a white screen with the dot that's what would happen. That that would be all of professional wrestling at that point. But you know like for me personally, I'm not opposed doing something with him. Just do something short term and make it something fun. You know, if you do something absolutely enjoyable, I think people would be there for it. Uh you know, very interesting. Goldberg's a free agent in 2022. People are still talking about him in some capacity Crazy. to do something in wrestling. Uh, really crazy, man, and it and it just shows to you and everybody else we have not developed the level of stars in the last two decades that we should have. It's just not it. it yeah. who, you know, we we haven't. Think about how many mega powerful stars in pro wrestling were created from ninety nine to let's say two. You know, not just from that time period ninety. 99 to 2009. Think about how many ma big names were made, actually. Probably not much. Oh, it yeah. all comes from the early 2000s. You know, it slowed down after a while, but very interesting stuff. Uh, also, J Josh Alexander of Impact Wrestling and Mickey James suffered injuries. Alexander already had surgery on his tricep, and he has vacated the title. Mickey James has still sacrificed in April to defend or vacate. She has a broken rib. Uh, both will miss the New Japan crossover show next week in L.A. New Japan announced Mercedes Monet will be defending the IWGP Championship. IWGP Women's Championship uh, in a three-way at Genesis. So she's doing another match here. And now this opens up. Is this going to be a forbidden door thing for her? Man, if there was a moment to bring her in, this is it, right? I think so. I do think that Forbidden... I've been saying this for weeks. I do think that Forbidden Door match should be Mercedes versus Jamie Hayter. 
man, I would love that match. I would want that. You know what's funny? Everybody keeps talking about, like, who does Mercedes face, right? And a lot of the mm. names that come up, it's Soraya, 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 Soraya. Uh, she's one name. Tony Storm's another one. Uh, Britt Baker's been said. But I want to see her and Jamie. And what a great yeah. moment that is for Jamie, right? You're elevating her to become a big name in, in women's pro wrestling. This is how you do it. You know, Mercedes Monet, uh, one of the one of the biggest names made in, in pro wrestling. One of the biggest names that that is, uh, you know, since the boom of women's wrestling. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. Other matches have also been announced. IWGP World Heavyweight Champion Okada defends against Sonata. IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion Takahashi. <laughs> Sorry. Hiromo Takahashi defends against Robbie Eagles. You also have IWGP Tag Team Champions Goto and Yoshi Yoshihashi, Rich's favorite wrestler, defending against Aussie Open. Zack Sabre Jr. with the New Japan World Television Championship depends against Shota Umino. Also, our very own Brian Alvarez and Tom Lawler lost their tag titles at, at the BLP Observe This Show. Very disappointed in this. They were cheated out of this title. Have to be cheated. Um... Rich, are you watching more New Japan now since they, they opened up a little bit more, right? I, I feel like it's getting there again, right? It, it, it's something's brewing again since the pandemic. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think it's brewing again. It's getting there. You know, I, I both of us are big fans of New Japan. I still want more. Um, and I also think, you know, like this may be that, that period uh, for regrowth. And maybe not everything is as cool as it once was, you know, like the breaking up of Suzuki Goon, I think is still leaving a bad taste in people's mouths. You think so? Um, I think so. I think so. And uh, I think uh, what was the new faction that I want to say Taichi, Taichi joined five guys. No, that's a burger place. That is a burger place. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, stuff like that is just like kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he joined a burger um, place, dude. He <laughs> joined a burger place. That's what. That's what I think. I think. Yeah, they're good burgers. Weird. They're fantastic burgers. If you haven't had a Five they're Guys, great burgers. Not, not an advertiser or anything. Uh, no, man, I, I'm excited for the. And listen, that show sold out. The Toronto yeah. Forbidden Door show fast, like within an hour, dude. I, I think there's a bunch of secondhand market tickets. I think it was almost like the last Wrestle Ticks reported, which, by the way, the best at this. The best at getting those instant numbers for ticketing. Uh, Russell ticks on Twitter. Oh, yeah. He also has a Patreon. Uh, I'm a subscriber of it because it, just the information he puts out. Him, Brandon Thurston, great numbers, guys, man. Uh, unbelievable at that stuff. Um, I, I think I think there's like almost two thousand sec secondhand market tickets, but generally those are either grabbed up or or they it's filled. You know, I don't expect there to be a bunch of, you know, empty holes in that building when it's showtime. But very cool show to do in Toronto. Very exciting show. Uh, we don't even have the card, but it just shows you that there is tremendous interest in just pro wrestling. No story needed. No main event announced. You know it's something cool. You could sell out 13,000, 14,000 people in a building by just the anticipation of what it could be. And we had the same thing happen at the last show. You know, we missed out on a lot of those key matches. We didn't have CM Punk in that Forbidden Door show, which we really wanted to see. We didn't have Kenny Omega there, yep. which we really wanted to see. So these are all things that, you know, we're going to get this year. No CM Punk, but we're going to get Kenny facing against somebody. We will get the Bucks against somebody. So I'm very, very excited about Forbidden Door. Uh, our buddy Joel Pearl, I believe, is going to be going. Maybe we should do a watch along for that one, Rich. I think that'd be fun. I, I would love to. We know a lot of people that are going to be there. A lot of yeah. Torontans that tune in to the Observer and tune in to Mat Men. Uh, hey, we're yeah, going to go to a quick a break. Up there. We're going to go to a quick break, Rich, and then come back from this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here with Rich Stambolian of the Mat Men Podcast. Hey, I'm also part of the Mat Men Podcast. If you like this show, check out Mat Men. We're on Observer. We're everywhere podcasts are available. We've been doing it for like 12 years now. It's a lot of fun, right, Rich? You know what? It is a whole lot of fun. I look forward to it every week. Uh, and, yeah, we've been doing it for so long, man. 450 episodes deep. Yeah. We took off last. Uh, actually, no. Last week we had Billy Corgan on, and th this week we took off. But we're doing this instead. So it works out. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I want to go into Ro Ro uh, Wrestle Royal Rumble. Jeez, I'm going back to January. What? I want to go into the WrestleMania uh, card so far and everything that's going on. But before yeah. I do that, I want to touch on a story that uh, was reported on the Wrestling Observer website. Uh, and it was originally based on my report that AEW is finalizing a deal for another show on Saturdays. And I can confirm that this show will most likely be announced very soon. And it's going to premiere by July, if not earlier. Now, there is a show that was moved. Uh, there was a Rampage taping in Saskatchewan that was moved uh, to 7-8. The 714 show was moved to 7-8, which is a Saturday, and there, they, there was a flyer that was getting circulated online saying that it's a TV taping or something. So uh, that may be one of the shows. It's possible. But it's also very possible that this is going to happen earlier than the 7-8 show. So sometime in January, uh, in June, it could also happen. There's a lot of moving parts here for AEW this summer. I, I know that they're, they, they have a lot of plans, and this is not the only announcement coming. There's also more. Well, I'll probably report on that in a week or so. But I, I know that they're working on a couple of really interesting things here. Uh, it's too early to report. That's why I'm holding off. I got to confirm. Right? I got to do my due diligence. Yeah. I got to double check. I can't get yelled at by people. I can't. This can't happen. The TV 14 can't happen again. Even though I was 100% right on that. They pulled the rug out under me, man. Do you know... I get taunted by them constantly at WWE. I get messages from them every time they say something naughty or something bad happens. Uh, a couple of weeks ago when they had to bleep out the the crowd cursing, they mm -hmm. kept writing. Uh, I, I kept getting messages got back and forth with a couple of people, and they kept writing to me like, <laughs> this TV-14 would have been great in this moment, right? I'm like, yes, it would have. <laughs> Unfortunately, everything went nuts over there over the summer. WrestleMania coming up next week. I can't believe it, Rich. Me neither, man. Time flew. Uh, I had a conversation yesterday with my wife, and she said, hey, when's WrestleMania? And I said, it's next weekend. Mm -hmm. You know, we can not we can be nuts and do a watch along both shows, but I, I, I want to actually enjoy watching WrestleMania. Too long. It seems like it's going to be a – it's going to be long. It's two nights, right? Yep. But nice. it's going to be a fun card. I'm actually looking forward – to this year's WrestleMania. And let me tell you, that SmackDown from Friday night, if you told me, hey, this is the go-home show for WrestleMania, I would have been happy with that. Yeah, it, dude, I'm watching it right now, actually. It's on right now, and um, I just put it on before we started just to have something on the TV. Uh, I'm watching the Dominic stuff, and I think they've done a very good job at this. I, I'm a big fan of Dominic. Yeah, you know what? He had a rough start, but he he's growing, and we're seeing him develop into a very dislikable character, which is exactly what they need oh, to be. Oh, yeah. Let's go down this card, Rich. Andre the Giant Battle Royal has been set for Russell, uh, ne for the Andre, I'm sorry. The Andre the Giant Battle Royal is set for next week's SmackDown in LA. John Cena versus Austin Theory will open night one. Interesting that it's opening night one. Why not? Why not? The Great Muda announced last week, and Andy Kaufman has been an, an, an added to the Hall of Fame. Listen, Kaufman 100% should be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, and if Muda people, too. Uh, Kaufman, I think, oh, is, yeah. the long con is going to come to an end, and Andy Kaufman is going to show up at the Hall of Fame to, Dude, you know what? to make his acceptance speech. I don't think people know. I don't think people know. The, the whole thing about Andy Kaufman, when I was, I guess, an early teen, right? I went down this Andy Kaufman rabbit hole because they used to air a bunch of his stuff on Comedy Central all the time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, my God, this! why am I so... I, I actually like this taxi character because it was like my relatives. Latka, yeah. Latka, like, Latka is every one of my uh, Eastern European relatives. <laughs> so I very much related to the character. But he was just a genius. He was out of his mind and it worked. The stuff with, with Lawler, obviously brilliant for the time. Uh, yep. I, I just, Tony Clifton. Tony, Cl Tony Clifton's my favorite character of Andy Kaufman. But uh, you know what? If, if he, you know who should induct him? Tony Clifton should induct him. I agree with you. I right? think it should be a Tony Clifton. Again, big reveal. It's Andy Kaufman. He it's Andy Kaufman in the whole time. He would if, if you subscribe to the conspiracy theory that Andy Kaufman is still alive and this is the longest con, that would be the most amazing thing on the planet. Who the longest Muda? con? The longest con. Is that is that another promoter that's opening up? 
<laughs> yes. We have Another, Nick Khan. Uh, we have Nick Khan. We have Tony Khan, and we have the longest Khan. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's Andy Kaufman. Amazing. Uh, very excited. And Muda, obviously. I really want Muda to do something at WrestleMania. That that I personally, and missed. I don't know. I don't know if they would. You know, he could come out and miss somebody. I would absolutely love seeing Muda to do something in the WWE. Shame would we you, never got would it. You, would you go nuts? If in the main event of WrestleMania, Cody versus Roman, Muda shows up and misses Roman right in the you know, face. You know, uh, how do you, how do you, it would make no sense, but how do you not like it? <laughs> right. Right. I also think that LA Knight's winning that Andre the Giant, the Giant dude, Battle Royal. I told you, dude, when I was at the Garden, I couldn't believe how over he was. And I like the character. I, I like the whole Steve yeah. Austin swag and a little bit of The Rock. Like, I very much like the whole uh, L.A. Knight stuff. Yep. But I, I hope WWE catches on, too. He's a great character, and he's, he's a good worker, and he's great on the mic. So I, I, I am biased towards him. I like him a lot. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Men's Tag Team Showcase Teams the men's tag showcase teams were announced. Thank you, MG, for that beautiful uh, literature you wrote here. Braun Strowman and Ricochet versus the Viking Raiders versus the Street Profits versus Alpha Academy. Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler were added to the women's showcase tag team match. Liv Morgan, Raquel Rodriguez, Ronda Rousey, Shayna Baszler versus, and, uh, versus Natty and Shotzi and TBD, Turnbuckle Dan. Dominic Mysterio, Rey Mysterio have been made official on SmackDown. So here's the card as of now. Undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Roman Reigns defends against Cody Rhodes. Huge anticipated main event. SmackDown Women's Championship. Yes. Charlotte Flair defends against Rhea Ripley. I want to see Rhea win this. I know you feel the same. Absolutely. Big moment for her if she, Big if moment. she gets it Yeah, together. man. Raw Women's Championship, Bianca Belair defends against Asuka. United States Championship, Austin Theory defends against John Cena, opening night one. IC, Intercontinental Championship, triple threat match. Gunther defends against Drew McIntyre and Sheamus. Undisputed WWE Tag Team Championships, the Ushos. The Ushos. The Ushos <laughs> defend against Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. This is a huge match as well. Hell in a Cell match, Edge versus Finn Balor, the Demon May possibly be arriving. Brock Lesnar versus Omos in the worst match of the night. Seth Rollins and Logan Paul. Sin Rollins. I like that name too. Seth Rollins versus Logan Paul. Rey Mysterio versus Dominic Mysterio. Trish Stratus, Becky Lynch, Lita versus Damage Control. Women's four-way tag team showcase we announced. And a men's match we announced. So these are the matches. This is a big, big two-night card. Give me your top three matches. Honestly, uh, I'll tell you right now, Cody versus Roman, been looking forward to that for yes. quite some time. Uh, I, do I think Cody's going to take it? I hope so. I hope but so. You have to think, do they want to do they want to pad the stats on Roman and have him go for like that Bruno length uh, title vic- title reign? Who knows? Um, according to my so son, one. according to my son, yeah. when he saw Cody at the garden, he went up to him. He's like, he's like, my dad said you're winning that title belt. <laughs> and then what did he Cody. say? Cody like looked at me. He's like, he's like, I hope so. <laughs> when did when did your kid turn into a newsie? Yeah, he's like newsie now. He's like, he's like, we're on the streets. That 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 you 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 you're taking the strap away from that Roman guy. That's what he said straight <laughs> up. And he had a he had a little goopaline on, and he had a little newspaper in his hand. It was a whole thing. <laughs> uh, the second match I'm looking forward to: John Cena versus Austin Theory. For sure. You want to see that? Uh, for some You're... reason. Yeah, I don't know why. For some reason, too. I'm like, yeah, I really want to see this happen. And, of course, the Uso, the Ushos, as you said before, the Usos yeah. versus Sammy and KO. Dude, it's not the Usos. I it's the Usos. It's a Greek, it's Uzos, a Greek tag yeah. team from Athens. The Usos. Uh, the Usos. Yeah, man, they, this... Sometimes they team up with the same. Yeah, with the, yeah, yeah, with the Sambucas. <laughs> they, they were, they, you know what? No, that was that was in in the early days, in the territory days. The Sambucas were a ripoff of the Uzos, and they would they would sometimes like it was like how Demolition and was like a, a LOD was a road Roadrunners. I'm losing my mind here. 
<laughs> uh, it's like that, you know, back in like 73, the Uzos versus the, uh, you know, Same the movies. Rock. Yeah, but Rocka, right? Isn't that the other one? The other ripoff of them? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what about you? Team right do you think Istanbul? Do you think, do you think Kevin Owens is going to turn on Sammy at WrestleMania? Dude, you know, I, I, I hope not because I want to see that, 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 that happy moment for them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, watching wrestling with my kids has kind of changed like what I like to see. Like they yeah. don't want bad guys to win, you know? Like, and we're all about character development. You want the best character to win. You want your fan favorites to win. Like, he wants, like, he doesn't want the Usos to win. But I'm like, yeah, but it would be awesome if Kevin turned on him. You could you continue this story. But I think they need to win the tag team titles at this point. They need to win that title. They need to do something cool with it. Uh, oh, lead yeah, into yeah. SummerSlam. And then you could do something, you know? It's a built-in story. Think about how many matches Cody has as a champion right now that you haven't seen in a world title match. You have him and Sammy for sure that has to happen. Him and yep. Solo Sokoa. Him and um, him and Drew, him and Gunther, him and uh, 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 Kevin Owens. There's so many great opponents well, for him. Also, Orton's coming back, right? Yes. Orton versus Cody. That's also built in. You know, like you can go a million different ways. Like a nice, there's a nice variety there. Um, and you know what? Cool Roman off a little bit because you know that guy's gonna get the belt at some point again. You know, he is. He's one of their most dominant champions. Do you think Roman would be that crossover superstar? You know, you mentioned Bill Goldberg at the top of the show. You know, the longevity of Bill Goldberg. Like 2023, people still want to see Bill Goldberg. Wild. Do you think do you think in 2033 folks are gonna still want to see Roman Reigns? I think so. Yeah. I, I think that th- th- we haven't had a run like this in in you know, uh, Cena, obviously, but we haven't had a run like this in a very, very long time. Uh, for someone to be so dominant and so I, like I'm not tired of seeing Roman right now, and not me neither. This started in the in the in the perform in the in the Thunderdome, the Roman stuff with the bloodline. Yeah. Think about how long this has been going on. Well, talk about Wild a long stuff. time. I think I think Roman's been their guy since his FCW days, right? Yeah, and absolutely. he's always been protected. You know, we talked about CM Punk before. CM Punk would always say, like in that 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 now infamous Cold Cabana podcast where his mandate from the top was make Roman look strong, right? Absolutely. And 10 years later, Still going he is on. the strongest. He's the boss. He's the he end the boss. boss. He is the end boss, and I love it, right? Very. I love yep. that concept for a pro wrestling heel. Going to go to a quick break. Final segment coming up here on Sports Byline. Wrestling Observer Live. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Final segment here with Rich Stambolian of the Mad Men Podcast. Rich and I booked a great uh, territory, apparently, throughout this entire show with our blunders. Sin Rollins, Cool Romanoff, the Rockies, the Uzos, and the Sambucas. This is a great, you know, late 60s, late 60s, mid 70s territory names, right? Cool Romanoff, a babyface Russian. A babyface Soviet? Great. Sin Rollins? And then you have all the other other uh, tag teams. Uh, you know, this is what happens on Mat Men. We start off talking very seriously about professional wrestling, and then it turns into us fantasy booking, pretend names. What does Cool Romanoff look like, Rich? Uh, he's He looks like Ilya Dragunov, except he's got sunglasses on. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Only difference. He's got aviators on, and that's it. He just pulls them down. He pulls them down. He pulls, this, is, this is where we enter the Matt Men portion of Wrestling Observer Live. He pulls them down real slow, and uh, he purses his lips at the camera like this and goes, cool. And that's it. And that's but, it. That's, that's it. it. That's all he does. That's all he does. Uh, we got Ring of Honor Supercard also. Supercard of Honor, 7 p.m. next week. A lot of great matches on there. We're running out of time to go through it, but ROH World Television Championship. Samoa Joe defends against Mark Briscoe. World Champion Claudio Castagnoli defends against Eddie Kingston. We also have Rampage, a big Rampage coming up. You have AEW Dynamite coming up. You have a lot of stuff this week. Listen, man, a lot of cool stuff's happening in pro wrestling. Uh, we absolutely love it. That's why we do this every week. You know, let the things play out. WrestleMania is now, it's here. And this is the beginning of a new cycle, whether or not Cody wins or not. We'll see you all next week on Wrestling Observer Live. 
Take care.